I'm Curtis Smith. Today, Catherine Neely, a master gardener in Albuquerque, is going to tell us about how to manage a flower, some of the questions a lot of gardeners ask. Catherine, I noticed that you've got some flowers here in your daylilies which are yet to bloom, some which are blooming now, but you've got the ones which have finished. What do you do with those? Well, since the daylily only blooms one day and then the next one opens the next day, it's prettier if you take off the old blooms. You just use your fingernail and sever them at the base. Otherwise, they'll form a seed pod and uh, that will sap the strength of the plant. Well, that's not very difficult to do. No, it isn't. And I notice your crepe myrtle has finished blooming. It takes yes. a different kind of deadheading, doesn't it? Let's go down there. You've got a lot of flowers blooming here, but one of the penalties of a lot of flowers is a lot of spent flowers and a lot of deadheading to do. And I notice this crepe myrtle here has finished blooming and you deadhead it in a different way, don't you? Yes, it takes a lot of effort to uh, deadhead. Uh, I usually do it a couple of uh, leaves below the uh, panicle, but sometimes when I'm shaping the plant, I go back farther down. This one will just cut here. Very good. And while we're standing here, I notice another question people are asking about. A lot of irises and daylilies have a yellow patch in the middle of the leaf, right where it bends. And then they die. Then it dies, <laughs> yes. And you have to keep pulling them out. We had a lot of heat damage this year. Uh, it, the foliage was so lush when it first came out, and when the heat hit it, it just burned. Yeah, the sunburn, that's what a plant looks like when it sunburns. <laughs> right. Well, thank you, Catherine. Well, you're welcome. Rick Daniel, Bernalillo County Horticulture Agents, examining a problem that confronts a lot of the county agents throughout the southwest. Hi, Curtis. Uh, what we're looking at today is that we've got some holes here. We get a lot of questions in the office that people think that they've got borers in their tree. And, you know, sometimes they do, but a lot of times problems are caused from, from birds. This is called caused from a yellow-breasted sapsucker. Uh, they're really not harmful to the tree or anything. They, you know, as long as the tree's in good, healthy condition. And uh, it, it's not bore, so it's not something you really need to treat for. And the clue is it's a straight line. Right. The bird pecks, a, takes a side step, pecks again, takes a side step, and gives you a nice straight line. That's right. That's right. You see that straight line, that's pretty much a, a dead giveaway for that one. Mm -hmm. Something I was looking at on this tree, I think is pretty interesting, that we get a lot of questions on too occasionally, is, is the way the bark is peeling on this. A lot of people will, will look at the tree and wonder, well, is that, is that what's wrong with that tree? What, what do you want to tell us about that? In this case, there's no problem. This type of crabapple tree has bark that peels off in this manner, so it's normal. We have a lot of trees that will do that. Okay. Thank you.